Let us learn how to draw a plant cell. The first step involves drawing a large rectangle with rounded corners. Uh, don't worry if the lines are not straight. Next, draw another rectangle within this. So just follow the outer rectangle and draw this. Make sure to maintain gaps between both the rectangles at all times. So this is the cell wall. The outer rectangle is the cell wall and the inner rectangle is the cell membrane. Uh, whatever is enclosed within is called as the cytoplasm. Now the cytoplasm contains a lot, lot of organelles, membrane bound organelles. So we will learn how to draw each one one by one. So the first organelle that we are going to draw is the vacuole. This is also called the central vacuole and it occupies a large amount of space in the plant cell. The next organelle that we are going to draw is something that is very specific to plant cells. So that is the chloroplast. Now chloroplast is the reason why plants are able to do photosynthesis. So chloroplast is a double membrane organelle which means it contains two membranes. So we have put the first membrane. Let us put another one inside. Again, make sure not to uh, uh, not to join these two lines at any place. Just maintain a gap because there is something called an intermembrane space between these two membranes. So uh, once we have drawn these two lines, uh, let us go and see what is present inside the chloroplast. So there are structures which appear like stacks of coins within the chloroplast. So let's just draw them in place. Some uh, three or four stacks should be good. So these stacks are actually called as grana. And each of those coin shaped structures is called a thylakoid. So these uh, grana are joined, uh, connected to each other by, uh, 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 by a set of membranes. And these membranes also extend from the grana just in, into the matrix of the chloroplast. So this is the chloroplast. Um, use another color this is a grana g r a n a and each of those coin shaped structures are called thylakoids okay so the next structure is the mitochondria the powerhouse of the cell so, uh, just draw an oblong shape and uh, a mitochondrion is also a double membrane structure. The distinct feature of a mitochondrion is that the inner membrane is made up of a large number of folds called cristae. So, this is how we draw the inner membrane of the mitochondrion. It has a large number of folds. So this is the mitochondria. The next structure is one of the most important parts of the cell, the nucleus. So nucleus is another double membrane organelle. So let us just draw two circles. And it has uh, something called nuclear pores. So first draw two circles. Now to represent the pores, let us erase out some portions in these circles. 
and these gaps we will uh, we will leave these gaps but connect the top uh, the outer and the inner membranes like this with tiny uh, curved lines so those gaps uh, represent the nuclear pores and these are the this is the outer membrane and this is the inner membrane uh, inside the nucleus, we find the nucleolus, which we represent by a shaded circle. And um, there is chromatin material, which is frankly the most uh, fun to draw because it's just a random scribbled line. There, the nucleus is done. The next step, uh, we will draw the endoplasmic reticulum, which is basically a large network of membranes. Sometimes it is uh, continuous with the nuclear membrane, but in this case, I am not drawing it like that. So just draw some folded lines like these. And uh, endoplasmic reticulum is of two types. One is the smooth and the other is the rough. The rough type contain, uh, has ribosomes attached to its surface. So, these white spots represent the ribosomes. So, this becomes the rough endoplasmic reticulum. And when the endoplasmic reticulum does not have anything attached on its outer membrane, outer side of the membrane, it's called the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Uh, these ribosomes are also found on the outside of the nuclear, uh, the nuclear membrane, uh, like this. So, uh, we have drawn ribosomes outside the nucleus and also on some parts of the endoplasmic reticulum. Okay, let's label these parts before we go to the next step. Uh, so, this is the nucleus. This is the nuclear pore. This is the nucleolus. And this is the squiggly line is the chromatin, sorry. Um, chromatin material. Uh, and this part is the rough endoplasmic reticulum. This part is the smooth endoplasmic reticulum. Another uh, organelle that is seen is the Golgi apparatus. So, uh, it is another kind of set of membranes, uh, but it is slightly different from the endoplasmic reticulum. So, the Golgi body is drawn like this. So, first draw two lines parallel to each other like this. And then at the end, draw a bulb sort of shape. So, do that to both ends. And you have a dumbbell sort of shape. So we just do this three times. Like that. And another time. This is the Golgi body. Along with the Golgi body, some vesicles are also seen associated with it. So we'll just draw some circles, some small ones and some big ones and some medium sized ones. So this is the Golgi body. And this is the vesicle. Okay, uh, another organelle, membrane bound organelle that is found is called uh, the peroxisome. So, it's just a vesicle which contains some enzymes. So, we are just randomly rep drawing these circles. A few of them. So, let us label this as the peroxisome. 
these are called peroxisomes okay now another step that is remaining is to draw the ribosomes that are found freely in the cytoplasm so just draw spots in the cytoplasm um make sure not to put them inside any of the membrane bound organelles exceptions are the chloroplast and the mitochondria so some ribosomes are found within the chloroplast as well as within the mitochondria but ribosomes are not found in inside any of the other organelles that are present in the cell um okay another thing that is found in a plant cell are connections between two adjacent cells so uh, cells communicate with each other with the help of these connections which are called plasmodesmata so these are uh, these we draw by uh, putting in some gaps in the cell wall and the cell membrane and let us connect the upper and the bottom lines like this just like we gave gaps to draw the nuclear pore in the nucleus in a similar manner we make gaps in the outer envelope of the cell so this gap this is called as the plasmodesmata plasmodesmata so these allow uh, certain molecules to pass through them to the next cell so that is how the uh, plant cells in uh, that is one form in which plant cells communicate with each other so i think that is all so this is how you draw a plant cell i hope you understand it and are able to draw it very easily thank you